What's up, everybody? I'm Aaron Velke, and I'm a results leader. You're listening to ResultsLeader.fm. Being a thought leader is easy. Getting results is hard. This show is for the results leader who lives and dies by their results. Here is your host and chief results leader, Jonathan Rivera. Welcome back to another edition of ResultsLeader.fm. I'm so glad that you're here, and I'm going to reward you today with an amazing interview with Mr. Aaron Belke. He's an entrepreneur, writer, high-performance coach, speaker, and he's from Baltimore, Maryland. I used to live out there. This conversation is so interesting. I caught myself just getting into what he was saying and forgetting that I was doing an interview. And that is rare. That is rare. You're going to hear an uplifting, positive message on growth, on getting better, on getting results. Let's jump in. Aaron, welcome to the show. Good to be speaking with you again, brother. Humbled to be here, man. Excited to, uh, to dive in. Which, what have we got today? We've got a quick win for our listeners. So what book have you given most as a gift? Ooh. Oh, as a gift. Um, I between two. One is insanely simple. Uh, it's a great book by Ken Siegel about Apple's kind of uh, effort into building simple things. Uh, and then secondly, um, there's a great book that I love um, lately called Nomad Capitalist that is all about observing entrepreneurship outside of the barriers of traditional, like stay in the States, have a home, build your business here. Very fascinating, very enlightening. And I bought like four copies in the last six days for people. Let me ask you about that. You, you're here in the States, right? Are, are you looking to, to leave, to detach and be able to travel the world? Or what is it about that book that's got you so hooked? So the last five years, I've been a travel hacker. I've, I've learned how to use credit to travel around the world for free. And in doing so, you get access to culture and people and just learning in such a deep way. And to be able to do that has really opened my eyes up. I mean, I don't think I traveled much as a kid at all. So it just, it was like a total change. And even if I don't leave the U.S. and try to live outside of the bounds, I very much believe in and support and think that Everyone should experience culture outside of our own just for simple appreciation. And this book has really flipped many philosophies and beliefs that were never explicitly said to me. They're just assumptions we make about how the world works and flip them all the way upside down. And I, I love that reset. I really appreciate when I, I learn something that breaks what I've learned in the past. All right. So I, 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 I'm with you. I've traveled. I do not want to travel now uh, because the world's all messed up. I'm like, ah, just stay right here. But the shifting of the paradigm, anytime I can get a different perspective that makes me question my thinking, I'm all for that. So it's now on my reading list. Thank you. Now I need a story from you. I need a story mm -hmm. of how an apparent failure set you up for later success. Ooh, so I'm going to go way, way, way back. Um, I've been a soccer player since I was very young, my first love. And uh, my whole dream through high school was playing pro. And high school was an interesting experience for me. There was a lot of uh, trouble around me. and Soccer was always my saving grace. And I get to about junior year. I'm very dedicated, very hardworking, and I tear my quad. And at that point, I had recruiters lined up. I had, I had something ahead of me to look forward to and it kind of all fizzled out and all the work that I had put in. I remember walking into my coach's office and crying and just being like, sorry, man, I got to go. He was like, dude, you're a captain, man. You can't, you can't leave your senior year. You can be at every single game just the way you were before. And the, it took maybe six months before I could move at least in a, in a manner that was reflective of being a soccer player. And something happened six months in where I was like, I think I'm going to go for it. 
And I ended up walking on to a division one team here in Baltimore and somewhere in between that, the most amazing lesson got really ingrained. And that was work can supersede what was told to me. Cause at that point I was told you're never going to play again, hang up your boots. You probably won't be able to run. And it's just, it's just not in the cards, man. You tore like the most important muscle for this activity and to be able to like, kind of pack that into a snowball and carry that into entrepreneurship, which at that time wasn't even on my mind to carry that into relationships, to carry that into so many things and say, on one side, don't believe what you're told. And on the other side, if you want it, there's a way really open the door to the rest of my life presently. And uh, it was a great lesson. I love it, man. I love it. They put up that wall and you, you leap over it. (laughs) Cool, man. That's right. So, Let's talk about investments, Aaron. And I'm curious what the most worthwhile investment you have ever made is. People. People. How so? I've gotten to walk a lot of different paths so far, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, I've got a couple businesses now, and I've been a soccer coach. I've been a personal trainer, and, and I've gotten to really see and experience psychology at a lot of different levels. And somebody asked me what the proudest thing in uh, one of my businesses is called Ortis Academy. And somebody asked me what, what the thing I'm proudest of in that business. And I was like, who my CEO and who my director of education have become along our journey and investing in them has really created a tremendous amount of output for the business and, and for, for, um, for me too, but also for investing in them, they have impacted many people. And, you know, there, there's a lot of vehicles that I'm invested in. You know, I'm in the crypto game. I'm getting into the real estate game. I've got businesses. I do. I, I help people through inner work and I'm a coach. Like there's, there's just a lot of different ways to invest and prefer to be well dabbled in a lot of different areas. But if, if you want to leverage anything, leverage people, like invest in them and, and watch them grow and expand and your life will change. And as a soccer coach, a lesson I learned was, you know, if, if a parent would trust me with their best thing, their daughter, then they would trust me with way more than that, their money, their business, their friendship. And I think that also was one of those snowball things where I could pack it down and keep it in my pocket and and consistently remind myself like, Hey, if you create trust here, if you invest in this, this person, this individual, if you show them, build with them, grow with them, the rest will be taken care of. And it has shown to be pretty effective as a strategy. In the last five years, what new belief behavior or habit has most improved your life? Ooh, that's good. Um, I quit my job like six years ago. So that's actually really fitting. I would say asking for conversations. So back to investing in people, reaching out to, to people that are beyond what I feel is capable for me and asking them for a meetup, a lunch. So maybe one would be... Wait, 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 wait. I got to interrupt you. That's an interesting statement. Beyond what what is capable for me, let me understand what that means. Help me. Yeah, we are consistently shackled by our own beliefs and what we think we're capable of, right? And I think the hardest thing in the world, especially in entrepreneurship, is to 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 imagine, okay, that's not capable. I'm not capable of that. Let me aggressively attack that belief. And the way that I approach that is, and the habit that I built is to look at that person, that's something I'm not capable of. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a, that's an improper belief. Surround yourself with them. And that really quickly has shown me that they are just normal people that have done that exact thing, right? They've changed their belief. And now something that was not on their, their like horizon of capability is now very much in their present realm of capability. Man, that is powerful, powerful. And and it goes back to being around the right people. It's something I call borrowed belief, where even if you don't believe you're capable of it, if you're around the right people, they help elevate you like you would do as as a coach, like you would do as a a visionary for your CEO in the company. That's just something that I I don't think enough people know exist and they don't tap into. And that's one of the reasons why you're so successful, because I thought it was funny. Let me just tell you, I got multiple businesses. I'm invested here. I'm invested there. And then I'm not capable to talk to this person. Please, they would love to talk to you. They want to know, well, what are you doing? Uh, what don't yep. I know? Help me out. So let's have a little fun. 
What are bad recommendations you hear in your area of expertise? Bad recommendations. I hear a lot of like when blank, then blank. So I'll give you some examples, right? Like I spend a lot of time now my coaching has evolved from soccer. It went from soccer to mindset to like personal development. So I coach people as a, as an awareness coach and I guide them through what, what I like to call alignment. And you hear a lot of like, well, when I hit my million bucks, then I'll go start a foundation. Or when I get to 10 million, then I'll take my wife out on date night regularly. And I spend a lot of time debunking that, you know, we, we all have this first battleground that we're on the first, like real war is like, I'm going to get what I feel is enough. And then beyond that, we have the real battle, the real climb of like impact and purpose. And if you can eliminate that language, and I think that's, that's one thing I get very frustrated when blank, I'll blank. My job as a coach, as a leader, as a visionary is to always eliminate the when and go straight to the second one and say, you know, are you, are you afraid that you haven't achieved enough to create a foundation? Because you already have. You don't need to have this stamp of approval from the world to build it. Build it now. Well, I don't, I don't have the capital. Well, do you have the creativity and, and ingenuity to make it happen? And by eliminating that, that, like, that phrase and the language that we use, breaking away from that, we allow ourselves to simply exist in what's possible for the creation of an idea the building of a relationship, the modeling of a life, the influence on others. And we don't have to wait for that. We can do that now. And, and all of that is contextualized around like later. That, the whole principle there is like, well, I'll do it later. And we're not promised later. So I'm very keen whenever I hear that, with an, especially with an entrepreneur, I, I work really hard to reset that language and bring what's future into present. Gosh, I can't tell you how much that resonates with me because I I was just talking to somebody about this the other day where one of my mentors gave me the exercise of uh, write a letter to yourself from 10 years in the future, what you're doing, how much you're making, what what your philanthropy looks like. And what I realized in doing this exercise, because I've done it a couple of times and and you nailed it. And and that's why I want to drive home this point for our listeners is when you can visualize that future, when you can get crystal clear on what it is, you can eliminate that time gap. You can just do it now, as you said, and and not too many people talk about that. That's powerful. But what's standing between us and that? It's just who we are and what we believe. And so that is a beautiful, beautiful philosophy, beautiful idea to share here. All right. I know you were getting into that and we were just about to get into my favorite part where we talk about results. But first, I want to ask you a question. Are you picking up what we're laying down on this show? Are you digging what we are sharing? If you are, why not make yourself a hero today and share this with somebody who can use it. Put this out on your social media channels. Hashtag results leader FM. I'll be out there looking for you and I'll make sure to boost it up too when I see you. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's jump back into the interview. And now I want to get into results. Why do results matter, Aaron? Uh, Measuring allows us to understand progress. It allows us to reflect. It allows us to learn. And as a guy who has been pretty resistant, I would say, (laughs) to measuring for a lot of years, I just felt it was unnecessary and that it didn't matter. It wasn't the right reason. What I've learned is that it is very important to measure. Even if you're not trying to, you are measuring something, even if you are um, resistant to it as I was. However, it is also important to be mindful of what you measure. So the reason results matter is it can drive us and propel us forward. And forward doesn't have to, like, we, we often associate forward with, like, more money, more business, more expansion. But forward could mean more time with kids, more time with friends, more time painting and presenting art, more time writing. It, it is really important to understand what you're measuring, but the way and methodology that I've found now is very focused on results and very focused on what results matter. 
which is a phenomenal reason that I'm here. What I would say has been the major lesson, though, is that the word results can be misinterpreted to be hyper narrow, right? We fixate on a couple things culturally, and it's our job as leaders to mind what results we actually care about the most. So for example, if, uh, if I am a coach, there are a lot of things that I can measure. I can measure someone's income. I can measure um, the number of times we meet. I can number, I can measure, you know, how effective they are at their habits. And in many ways that has been very effective to measure some of those baseline parameters. What I really try to prioritize in any business venture and any personal dynamic is to measure the process. That way I always get the outcome that I want. So that's where my results scenario has shifted. The results I focus on now are inputs. Are my inputs proper? And if I focus on those, my outputs are, I wouldn't say guaranteed, but they are reliable. And what that has meant is that my focus has shifted from let me measure the output to let me measure the input. And by measuring the input, my whole life has changed. So now I focus on how many Duolingo lessons do I do? How many happy miles do I run? How often am I at the gym? How many times do I post on social media? How many times do I share openly? How often am I uh, tracking my morning routine? How often am I tracking my sleep? If I do these things, then I become the person that gets the results that I want. And that has really dramatically shifted. So results is an interesting word because it, it often favors outcomes. And I really would stress to listeners that you reframe that. All right. I'm, I'm just letting that sink in. You're talking about process goals and it's something near and dear to my heart. And it's a place where I believe we can find happiness because it's in our control and I don't know that anybody's brought that to the show. So I think you're you're two now, two two new things bring into the <laughs> you're on <Yes>. fire today. <laughs> I'm sitting here just trying to process it all. So I'm digging it, man. Let's think a little bit. In the last five years, what new realization has helped you get better results for your clients? In all cases, awareness. So I've got a couple of businesses, some in personal development, one in financial education and financial development. And then as a coach and, uh, and director for, for many people in, in their own awareness journey, awareness is, is fundamental for two reasons. One, it's impossible to guide someone where they want to go if they don't know where they want to go and where they are subsequently. So you have to have both to GPS your way there. But awareness is bigger than that. Awareness allows us to sit in the moments of discomfort and resistance and then evolve from them. And anytime we are in a particularly driven and ambitious vehicle, entrepreneurship, performing arts, you know, if we're aggressive financially, we're going to hit these walls. And if we're not aware, the walls can completely collapse the ambition and drive that we have. And awareness allows us to hit a wall and respond to that wall with a degree of curiosity and intrigue so that we can learn the lesson of the wall, reflect on it, and then evolve. And in most cases, I find that anyone, whether it's I want to build a better financial future, or I want to take my business to the next level, or I want to take me to the next level, the fundamental building block is where are you? What are you sensing? What are you feeling? And what is the process by which this belief system that you had was created? And that is all awareness, right? If you don't think it's it's possible for you, I've got to go back and build awareness to the moment that someone drove that in. Whether that was a mom, when you said, I want to be an astronaut. And she was like, well, Jonathan, you know, astronauts usually are six foot seven and have three arms. So I don't think that's possible. And all of a sudden you're like, I can't be what I want to be. Oh no. And oh, unless, I'm getting chills saying this, unless you've built a really solid foundation of awareness, that little tiny seed becomes this huge belief of, I can't be who I want to be because I'm not blank. And we live in a not blank culture, not fast enough, not sexy enough, not smart enough, not strong enough. So you're going to latch onto that at every different stage of your life. And we have to build awareness back. So that for me is always a big, big key as is awareness in the front of like, well, you tell me you want $10 million, but why? Oh, because I want to build a foundation, right? So now we're back to the first comment about you know, when I blank, then blank. 
So if, if I work with people on awareness of what you want in the long term, I can help them bring that to the present simply by working with the awareness of, well, what, what does that get you? $10 million just puts you back in the race of go get more. We're all in the race for more. What is it that you deeply want here? Let's build awareness of that. Let's talk about your business for a second. What area of your business would you like better results? You know, I always look for how can, how can I do more, right? How can I do more with less? And all of my businesses are based on driving impact and helping people change and evolve. So I always look for what systems could be better. How could I make me a system? How could I help take all of the things that I know and do and guide people through and, and make them processes that operate without me? And I'm not really a systems guy. So that would be one area that I would love to be better because I'm just a system breaker. <laughs> and that has merit. That has a lot of value in some areas, but that is definitely an area that I rely on others to, to help me with. And it can always be improved to take art and chaos and help support that into a more fluid one, two, three process. Um, that would be a, a great area to improve in, in, in all businesses, making more systems. Now, I promise you that this is always in my script, even though you mentioned something like this earlier. What, what results are you most proud of? Mm, nice. Well, certainly COO and director of education, who they're becoming is one. I go back to context of mortality for, for these kinds of questions, right? Like everything to me is about this, this end post that we're all either uh, like afraid of accepting or running from or humbly mindful of. So what I'm proudest of, man, I, I quit my job six years ago and I have been on this burner of a track to discover myself. And along the journey, I've been super mindful that every step or two that I take, I pull people up that, that step that I just passed. And I'm proudest of that because it would be very easy. I think maybe who knows, uh, it would be very, it'd be much simpler if I was just like, guys, I'll meet you at the top and just bounce out. And I find that with this looming mortality as context, I am reminded that that's going to be what is behind me when I'm gone. It's only going to be about how I made people feel, how I helped them and how I helped them evolve into the person they are now to help the next person underneath them evolve. And I, I don't know that I ever want to know with a high degree of detail what people will say when I'm gone. But I am mindful that I have at least attempted with a lot of integrity to make sure that that ripple extends way beyond me. And I'm very, very proud of that. I dig it, man. So... Any parting thoughts you'd like to share with the results leaders who are listening to us right now? If you're tuned into this, you're, you're probably pretty dialed in. And if you're dialed in, I would encourage you to audit what you're dialed into. It seems self-evident after more and more awareness that we would question what we're driving towards, what we want, what we're seeking, what's going to satisfy us. And yet I find that in the chase of results, we don't often create the space to, to deeply audit what we're looking for. And, you know, to be a part of this, one, I'm very grateful to be here. I also think that it, it is somewhat of a responsibility for me to challenge anyone listening to, to question what results they're deeply after. Often there is a result behind the result that we really want. So I want to be on Forbes magazine. Well, beyond that, what does that allow you to do? Does that allow you to create the foundation and raise capital faster because you want to make an impact? Cool. Be aware of that. Mind that result. Is it, you know, having that kind of notoriety allows you to provide for your family differently? Cool. Be mindful of that. Their version of provision and yours may be wildly different. It's really important to do that audit. And if you're tuned into a podcast like this, a show that has nurtured this idea and questioned what results are you proud of and what are you looking for and what is results for you, then you're probably already pretty dialed in, but I would encourage everyone to take a decompression day once a quarter and, and look, write down some of the questions that you're asking me. What, what are the results you're proud of? What results are you chasing? Those, those are meaningful self-reflections. And I think a, a very, I'd send a very loving push to everyone listening to do that. People are going to want more. 
they're going to be like knocking down my door to get at you. So where, where can they go? Uh, there's two places. One, you can go to aaronvelke.com, just A-A-R-O-N-V as in victory, E-L-K-Y.com. You can go there. It's just a very easy, lighthearted website that I uh, probably need to invest some time into for better results. Uh, the other place, the other, the name of the business or the, the two businesses that I run, one is Frontrunner. Frontrunner.group is our website. And then uh, Ortus Academy, O-R-T-U-S Academy is a great place. You can find all of our stuff too. So any of those places, but I'll give you my direct email, just Aaron, A-A-R-O-N at OrtusAcademy.com, O-R-T-U-S Academy.com. You can just, just email me, just shoot me a message. Say, hey, I heard you here. We'd love to chat. I love, uh, love connecting with new people. And that is a result that I love to keep high on my process list. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So we've been speaking to Aaron Velke. Thank you for being here, brother. We will have links to everything that Aaron mentioned on the show notes should you guys need it. That is a wrap for another resultsleader.fm. That is a wrap for another edition of resultsleader.fm. If you are out there getting results for your clients and you want to be featured on the show, go to resultsleader.fm now and apply to be on the show. And if you love what you're hearing, share the show, give us a rating and review, do anything to help us get the message out there. Thought leadership is easy, but results leadership is hard. This is the podcastfactory.com.